In a room bathed in the gentle glow of subtle, sophisticated lighting, I, Elise, was enveloped by a gown that seemed to be spun from dreams and starlight. The ivory fabric, embroidered with delicate silver threads, whispered promises of a splendid future as it rustled softly around my ankles. It was a scene that should have been filled with joy and sweet anticipation. But the moment was usurped, infiltrated by a shadow that masqueraded as a friend. Vanessa, with every eye in the room affixed to her, the shroud of dread encapsulated me. Oh, Elise, how splendid we look, Vanessa trilled, twirling in her dress, a sinister reflection of mine, her eyes sparkling with mischief veiled as innocence. Murmurs cascaded through the assembly of guests, their glances flickering between Vanessa and me, their faces painted with astonishment and veiled disdain toward the evident mockery unfolding before them. And amidst the cacophony of hushed whispers and the clinking of glasses, my voice emerged, a tranquil stillness in the ensuing storm. How uniquely unoriginal, Vanessa. Her eyes, those pools of feigned surprise, stared into mine, and she took a step forward, the silk of our dresses brushing against each other in an almost melancholic symphony of what could have been a shared happiness. Unoriginal? Oh, dear Elise. I thought we could elevate your modest taste by mirroring it. After all, it's always been you who managed to capture my brother's heart with such ordinary charm. Every word was a dagger sheathed in honey, designed to wound under the guise of sweetness. I stepped closer, my voice barely audible yet firm, quivering with a quiet rage and resolution. Your malevolence will never tarnish my joy, Vanessa. The corners of her mouth twitched ever so slightly, an unnerving blend of bitterness and satisfaction painting her visage as she stepped back, her voice lacing each word with a venomous allure. Let's allow the guests to decide which of us wore it best, shall we? My gaze, unwavering, met hers, and I nodded subtly, my heart encased in a newfound resolve. I would not allow the maliciousness, the palpable hatred emanating from Vanessa, to dictate the narrative of my life or my wedding day. The vow silently anchored itself within me as I turned away, refusing to gift her any semblance of victory. The evening proceeded, entwining joy and malicious satisfaction, genuine smiles and concealed smirks. Throughout the night, I could feel Vanessa's eyes, gloating and triumphant, attempting to penetrate the sanctuary of my happiness. But I stood resilient amidst the chaos, my focus unwavering from the true essence of the day, love, commitment, and a future unbeknownst to the shadow that attempted to engulf it. Vanessa may have mirrored my appearance, but she could not mirror my grace, my compassion, nor the love that enveloped me despite her treacherous intent. Every gentle touch and tender word exchanged with my husband served as a reminder that her bitterness had no place in our union. Her reflection, no matter how meticulously crafted, would forever remain void of the genuine warmth and kindness that defined me, Elise. As the day folded into the envelope of the past, and I, basked in the glow of my vows and shared adoration, the seed of retaliation was quietly sown. Vanessa had unveiled her true self to me, unshackling me from the bonds of familial duty and tolerance. And so, I whispered into the serene night, your deceit will be your own unraveling, Vanessa. In the lingering echo of those words, the first chapter of our entwined fates was solemnly inked, foreshadowing a turbulent journey where light would eternally combat the invasive darkness. The war, silent yet vehemently potent, had commenced. The air grew thick with tension, every gathering thereafter becoming a battlefield of veiled hostilities and silent accusations. I, Elise, wandered through the days, the echoing laughter from my wedding now replaced by the ominous silence that hung between my family and me, a chasm forged by Vanessa's treacherous duplicity and my resolute exclusion of her from my life. You always had to be the favorite, didn't you, Elise? Even now, you'd cast me aside just to have them all to yourself? Vanessa's voice slithered through the strained silence of the family gathering, her eyes gleaming with a concoction of defiance and feigned hurt. I gazed upon her, the pitiable spectacle she crafted for our family, my resolve unwavering amidst her theatrics. No, Vanessa. This is not about being a favorite. This is about no longer allowing your toxicity to seep into my life. The room held its collective breath, tiptoeing on the delicate precipice of our confrontation, each word hanging heavy in the stifled air. Her voice, 
dripping with saccharine innocence and carefully crafted despair, pierced through the stillness. Toxic? Is this what you've told them all? That your poor sister-in-law is nothing but a venomous serpent, out to tarnish your ever-so-pristine existence? Her dramatic lament, however, could not mask the venom subtly lacing each syllable, nor could her feigned tears completely veil the triumphant glint that flickered behind her eyes. Your actions at the wedding, Vanessa, they spoke more truth than your words ever have. She stepped forward, her every movement calculated and deliberate. But Elise, I was only trying to honor your exquisite taste. How could such a heartfelt gesture be so wildly misinterpreted? The sorrowful shake of her head, the calculated catch in her throat. They were all performances meant to sway the audience in her favor. But I had seen behind the curtain, witnessed the malice that puppeteered her every move. Your gestures are never without malice, Vanessa. Your veiled animosity, your carefully curated antagonism. I won't allow them space in my life. Not any longer. A hushed murmur fluttered through the room, my declaration hanging heavily in the space between alliances and divisions. Family members cast glances, torn between allegiance and obligation, while others lowered their gaze, the turmoil silently bubbling beneath the surface. In the uneasy silence that ensued, my husband's hand found mine, his fingers intertwining with a gentle assurance. Elise, whatever your decision, I stand with you. His voice was a soft, steadfast whisper, a quiet anchor amidst the tempest Vanessa sought to unleash. Vanessa, her countenance momentarily flickering with an unbridled rage, quickly composed herself, her mask sliding seamlessly back into place. Oh, brother, how Elise has you ensnared in her web of deceit. But worry not, I shall not contest her witchery. I shall take my leave, and willingly so. Her voice rose, theatrically resonating through the room. Family, I bid you farewell, for I cannot dwell where I am so heartlessly castigated. Her departure, though melodramatic and elongated, brought forth a palpable relief, an exhale after a collective breath held far too long. But beneath the surface lingered the remnants of the rifts she had meticulously carved, the silent accusations and unspoken alliances that would forevermore linger in every familial interaction. I, Elise, had extracted the venom, but the sting, the residual pain of Vanessa's malevolence, would linger, a somber reminder of the shadow that would forever linger, hovering ominously over the illumination of my steadfast resolve. In the solemnity of her absence, I found a melancholic peace, a resolution shrouded in the sorrowful remnants of what once was and what could never be again. I, with quiet fortitude, had chosen exclusion over submission, choosing the pain of division over the relentless erosion of Vanessa's malevolence. And in that choice, a somber strength was forged, quietly enduring amidst the ensuing storm. Navigating through the unsteady terrain that my family had become in the wake of Vanessa's departure was akin to treading on a field of latent, unseen minds. The tensions were unseen yet ever-present, the emotional turmoil submerged yet perpetually sensed. A fragile peace was maintained, a semblance of unity persisting amidst the undercurrents of lingering pain and unspoken resentment. It's unfair that you all perceive Elise as the beacon of truth and righteousness. The voice, a distant relative who'd always leaned towards Vanessa's tales, broke through the subtle serenity of our gathering, the underlying bitterness oozing from every syllable. I felt the eyes, some sympathetic, some accusing, converge upon me. I've said nothing that isn't true, my intention was never to paint myself as a saint, but to safeguard myself and my sanity from further damage. My voice, steady yet layered with latent emotions, reverberated through the room. It was not defiance that echoed through my words, but an unyielding adherence to my truth, my reality that had for too long been tainted by Vanessa's malevolent shadow. As days melded into nights, an unexpected message arrived, veiled as an apology from Vanessa, but beneath the words lay a hidden, coded plea for help. Intrigue and caution interwoven, I delved into the enigmatic communication, unearthing a trove of concealed secrets, an abyss of Vanessa's malevolence that extended far beyond my own experiences. Deception, manipulation, covert sabotage. Vanessa's sinister tapestry was intricate and expansive, her venom seeping into the lives of family members, insidiously corroding bonds and trust from within. I... I don't know what to say, Elise. These... revelations. 
They're horrifying. My husband's voice, strained with the burden of the unveiled truths, whispered through the dimly lit room, the visible tremble of his frame a testament to the shattering of illusions Vanessa had so meticulously crafted. It's not just us, is it? She's weaved this web of deceit through the waves of turmoil stirred by Vanessa's malevolence, crashed with an impending intensity against the shores of our family's unity. But like the resilient cliffs that stand tall against the raging seas, I found an unwavering strength deep within. In her blind rage and desperation to tarnish my reputation, Vanessa became careless, leaving behind traces of her meticulously woven fabric of lies. It's unbelievable. Look at this. I turned my gaze to the document being thrust before me, the inked words laying bare Vanessa's latest wicked stratagem. Emails, messages, elaborate plots. Her intent was transparent. To turn everyone against me. Does she honestly believe she can simply topple me with such childish schemes? Shaking my head in disbelief, I couldn't help but marvel at her audacity. It was both terrifying and pitiable to see how far she was willing to go to achieve her malicious ends. I've had enough, Elise. This, this goes beyond the bounds of sanity. The tremor in my husband's voice conveyed more than mere anger. It was the sound of a soul coming to terms with the deep-rooted malevolence that had lived amongst us. With each passing day, I gathered the fragments of Vanessa's deceit, piecing them together like a jigsaw puzzle until the entire grotesque picture emerged. The time had come to cast light upon her shadows, to unveil her true nature for all to witness. At a gathering, with family and friends who had been both allies and antagonists throughout this ordeal, I laid everything out. The evidence of Vanessa's wickedness, a tangible testament to the depths she had sunk. I never imagined she'd go to such lengths, someone whispered. What kind of a monster does something like this? I watched as shockwaves radiated through the room. The gasps, the disbelieving looks, the hushed murmurs. Everything resonated with the undeniable reality that Vanessa had been unmasked. The aftermath of that evening was an isolation that Vanessa had never envisioned for herself. Friends who had stood by her side were now nowhere to be seen. Family who had once defended her now looked at her with contempt and pity. But in all this chaos, in the epicenter of this storm, I stood tall. Not with an air of arrogance or triumph, but with a serenity that came from being true to oneself. I had not sunk to her level. I had not let vengeance cloud my judgments. My victory was not in her defeat, but in my resilience. I never wanted any of this, but I also couldn't let her destroy everything we've built. Our love, our trust, our family. I confided in my husband one quiet evening, the setting sun painting the horizon with hues of gold and crimson. You did what you had to, Elise. In the end, truth always finds its way to the surface. He held me close, and in that embrace, amidst the whispers of the evening breeze, I felt a profound sense of peace. The storm had passed, and a new dawn awaited. The story of Elise and Vanessa has concluded, but the memories of their complicated relationship linger in our thoughts. A moment for reflection prompts us. Can we ever truly sever ties with a toxic family member? Or is the bond of family unbreakable despite the malice experienced? Does maintaining a relationship with a deceitful relative demonstrate strength and resilience? Or does it expose a vulnerability that may be exploited again in the future? Share your thoughts and personal experiences in the comments below, and let's navigate through these intricate web of emotions together. If you found resonance in our story, please gently press that like button and consider subscribing to OSA, our stories animated, for more deep, thought-provoking narratives to come. Until our next tale, take care.